I'm Colin O'Malley with ATO. We're just releasing our 1.1 update for the Adagio Violins Volume 1 and I want to walk you through some of the changes that we've made and improvements as well. The biggest thing we've done is just polish the library, particularly the legato patches. The interval transitions have been refined and balanced with the associated grafted notes and sustains. We've also added a lot of new features and also improved mixes in the library, improving the sound overall. Um, generally, I'd just say the library is much more in line with what our original intention was for Adagio. The first thing I want to draw your attention to are our short notes. Charles and I liked them a lot before, but we felt they didn't quite represent what we heard in the church. We've gone back in and reprogrammed and mixed them. They're a lot lusher sounding now, as you'll hear. We have 10 short note varieties in Adagio, so you can really push things way beyond just staccato and spiccato and mimic the true variety and energy you'd have in a live group. This example I'm going to play is the mixed mic position with no reverb added. The tail you're hearing is just the natural sound of the church. As I mentioned before, a major part of this update has been focused on polishing the legato patches. The balance between the intervals and the associated sustains and dynamic notes are much smoother now. We've also added an all new close mix to the legatos. This close mix is much more detailed and focused than the previous close mix that appeared in the 1.0 patches. I'm sort of addicted to it to be honest. It's still lush sounding, but the intervals tend to shine through more, particularly in a larger arrangement. Here's a quick example of the close mics using my favorite Adagio legato, Village. Most of the 1.1 Adagio patches now have a Violins 2 button. When it's highlighted, the samples are processed to recreate the slightly darker tone and imaging of a Violin 2 section. The processing is done in such a way to avoid phasing so you can layer a Violins 2 enabled patch on top of a regular version of itself. However, I typically use this button for instruments on lower harmonies. A number of the legato patches now have vibrato character control. You'll see this vibrato knob here in the patches that have it. Vibrato character is controlled by default using MIDI CC12, but you can right click the knob and assign whatever MIDI CC you want. The character control goes beyond just adding more vibrato. It actually alters the character bringing out more soloistic detail. Here's an example writing both CC1 dynamics and CC12 vibrato control to move from very light to heavy vibrato.
Adagio now includes multi-legato patches. These patches allow you to switch fluidly between up to three legato types within a single connected phrase. You can switch legato types via MIDI CC13, or if you highlight this auto button here, Velocity will control the legato type. Here's a quick example mixing up three legatos in a single phrase. Most of the legato patches in Adagio have lure repetition phrases as one of their articulation choices. These lure phrases can now be synced to your host DAW tempo using Time Machine and Contact. This feature works in Contact 4, but I strongly recommend you move to Contact 5. The Time Machine Pro algorithm and time stretching is just a lot better. Trolls has created a ton of bonus ambiences by mangling and processing our Adagio source material. Each of the ambiences has a filter control as well as pitch down here in the lower part of the keyboard. I'm just going to play through a few of these for you. Nearly all of the patches in Adagio now have light versions which use direct from disk streaming and contact. In most cases these light patches are nearly identical to the full versions but have much smaller memory footprints. As an example, Adagio Instinct Legato, the full version is 500 megabytes. The light version here is about 22 megabytes. So unless you're using Adagio Speed Control, Tightness Control, or our Tempo Sync Lurays, I would definitely stick with the light patches. We get a lot of questions about using Adagio with other libraries. I'd say Adagio works particularly well with both Project Sam Symphobia and the Spitfire libraries, mainly because all three have a similar large ambient tone to them. In my standard Adagio setup, I usually add a touch of the far mics, but still favor the close. I'll also add a simple broad cue cut like this. Both Spitfire and Symphobia use a similar cut in their programming. It helps the air of the sound shine through a bit more by kind of thinning out the mids. It's a little less tubby. We'll be including a number of useful EQ presets in the future, but for now this is definitely something to experiment with. Finally, I want to let you know that the release of Adagio Cellos is not far off. We're nearly there. We'll be announcing more information and release dates for those very, very soon. Trolls and I for Adagio typically sample for five hour days. That's sort of the useful uh, amount of consciousness we can get from the musicians. They kind of fade after that amount of time. We've done 60 days and approximately 300 hours of recording for Adagio. That includes the violas and the basses, which will follow shortly after the cello release, and also volume two of all the strings. The Adagio concept is a lot larger than we've announced to this point, and we look forward to sharing more of that soon. But for the short term, uh, brace yourself for the cellos. Thank you.